In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to read data from Excel by using Python 3 and the XLRD module. Hello humans, I'm Kyle and welcome to Code for Humans, the channel dedicated to leveling up your coding ability. This is the first video of a four part series and within the week I'll have three more videos covering writing, styling, and modifying Excel files, so I'll put a link to the full playlist down in the description. So to start, what is XLRD? XLRD is a Python module that allows us to read from Excel files, whether they be XLSX or XLS files. XLRD must be pip installed, so I'll link to a video I made detailing how to do that for those of you who don't know how to pip install. But the command for it is pip install XLRD. So assuming you've already done that, and I have, I'll say import XLRD and we are good to go. So before we get into this, I'll show you the file we are going to read from. So in my folder, and I'll just drag this guy over, and here I have business report. So business report is just a pretty simple Excel file. Here you can see we have some headers, we have some dates, we have some numbers, and then profit is a formula. So it's going to be revenue minus cost. The important thing to note here is the difference between a workbook and a worksheet. So a workbook is basically the entire file. You only have one workbook per file, but you can have multiple worksheets per workbook. So you can see down here, I'm in sheet one, but if I hit plus, I can add another sheet to it and it will have its own data within it. As you can see, I've been messing with this file a while, but if this is new, it would say sheet two. Anyway, we're gonna keep things simple. We're only gonna have one sheet for now, but just know, one workbook per file, mini, or just one worksheet per workbook. So let's actually get into opening this with Python. The first thing we need to do is tell Python where it can find our file. So I'll say path is equal to where my file is. So if I look in here, I can see this is the path to this folder, and then I'll have business report within that folder. So all I'm going to do so I'm going to copy this from my notes so you don't have to watch me type, but I copied that path out of file explorer and then I typed business report.xlsx. Don't forget the extension. So as you can see, I have these double slashes. Anytime you have a path in a string, you have to have these double slashes or else escape characters will break your code. Uh, I don't wanna waste time detailing that now, but remember double slashes if you have a path in a string. Now we know where our file is, so let's actually open it. I'll say Excel workbook is going to be equal to XLRD dot something. So we're going to use a function out of XLRD and that is going to be open workbook. So this function only takes one parameter. Where is the file that we're gonna open? And that is that path. So now this will open our file and now we wanna open the individual sheet because the sheet is what actually has our data in it. So I'll say Excel worksheet is equal to something out of my workbook and that is going to be sheet by index zero. So the way we reference sheets is we tell it the index of the sheet we wanna reference. So since we only have one sheet, it is at index zero. If I had another sheet, this would be at index one, index two, and so on. So let's say you needed to work with multiple. You could just copy this, paste it, and say Excel worksheet one is equal to sheet by index at one, something like that. But again, keeping things simple, only using one worksheet for now. Okay, so to print individual data out of this, we can say, I want to print something, and that something is in my Excel worksheet and I wanna look at the value in the cell. And now here's the weird thing. So we have to give it X, Y coordinates, but it asks for Y first and then X. So let's just do an example. Let's say I wanna print out D2. The first thing it needs to know is the Y coordinate of this. And again, we start counting at zero. So I'm in row zero, row one. So my Y is one. So I'll type that here. And now we need to figure out the X. How far to the right is this? So zero, one, two, three, it is at three. So the Y 
is one, the x is three, and if we run this, we can see that 50 prints out, which is the value at D2. Let's do one more example. I'll say I want to print out B3. So what is the Y? I'll go 0, 1, 2. My Y is 2. So I'll change that. What is my X? It is 0, 1. My X is 1. And now running this, we see 200 print out. And that is the value at B3. So again, we have to tell Python how far down it is and then how far to the right it is. For now, I'll delete this. I need to tell you about in rows and in calls. So I'll copy and paste this from my notes. So each Excel worksheet has these properties built into it, and it's the number of columns in that sheet and the number of rows. So some of you may be thinking, well, Excel files have a lot of rows. I mean, these are still rows in my Excel sheet, and that's true, but the people at XLRD made it so that it only counts the rows and columns that have been edited. So you can see like this has been edited, but something over here is not. So when we run this, we're gonna see that our worksheet only has four columns and four rows because that's all we've edited. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So four by four. So we can use in rows and in calls to intelligently loop through our table. So what I'll do is I'll say for every row in range, Excel worksheet dot in rows. So for every row that has been edited, I want to loop. And then I'll say for every column in range, Excel worksheet dot in calls. So what we're going to do is loop through every row and then in that row loop through every column. So what that's going to effectively do is look at date, then revenue, then cost, then profit. We get to the end of our row, we go to the next row, print this, print this, print this, print this, and so on. So to actually do that, I'll say print Excel worksheet dot cell value at row call. Again, how far down it is, then how far to the right it is. So if we just run this, we can see that I forgot a parenthesis. So I'll close that and run our code again. And we can see exactly that date, then revenue, then profit, then cost. Um, we get this weird number when we get to dates. I'll adjust that in a minute. But first, I want to actually make this print out to look like a table because right now it's just line after line. It doesn't look very good. There's actually a keyword we can use with print statements called end. And if we say end is equal to an empty string, then instead of making a new line after every print statement, it'll do nothing. So if we run this again, we get everything smashed together on one line. That's not exactly what we want though. So I'll say after you print one specific value, print a tab, which is slash T. And then also I'll say end is equal to blank. And then after every column, I'm gonna make a new line. So if I run this again, you can see now I have like a tab in between each uh, piece of data. And then after every row, we have a new line. So things are starting to look good. Again, dates are a little messed up. So here's the issue. Excel stores dates as floats. So the whole number here represents a specific day. And then the decimal represents the time of day. So if it's like noon, this would be 0.5. If it's 6 p.m., this would be 0.75 and so on. We only have dates though, so it's always gonna be 0. 0.0. But the way we fix that is by using a function that's built into XLRD. The people who made this realized this issue, so they made it easy on us. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out when we want to apply this new function. And it's only when we have dates. So that is when we're in the date column, which is the zero column, and we are not looking at the header. So anything in column A that's not at row one. So just this stuff. So the way we say that is if column is equal to zero, if we're in the first column and row does not equal zero, 
So first column, but not the first row, but everything else in that column. So when that happens, we are going to format our dates. If we're not in that column, so if we are anywhere else, we just want to print whatever's there. So I'll say else print exactly what we already had. And then regardless, we're still going to have this tab and new line. So how do we actually format these dates? The way we do it is I'll say raw value is equal to exactly this. So effectively all I'm doing is I'm pulling whatever value is here and we're going to store it in raw value. So in the case of dates, that is going to be these weird numbers that we see. So that is going to be what raw value is equal to. Now I'm going to convert raw value. So I'll say converted date is equal to XLRD. So some function out of XLRD, and that is going to be Excel date as tuple. So this takes two parameters. It takes the value we want to convert, which is in raw value and the date mode of our workbook. So I'll say Excel workbook dot date mode. So don't worry about this. You don't have to make it yourself. By default, Excel workbooks have some type of date mode. All we're doing is telling it the default value we are using. So you can pretty much just copy and paste this. This isn't something you need to understand. But if I print converted date and run this, then you can see I get these tuples. It messes up all the formatting, but whatever. And now I can see I'm at 2020 in the sixth month on the second day, and then the third day and fourth day and so on. So again, uh, June 2nd, 2020, June 3rd, 2020, and so on. So you could just say, you know, you could format this yourself, but I like to be lazy as programmers should. So we are going to use date time. So I know date time isn't perfect, but it is a good module and it's built into Python. So all I'm gonna say is import date time. No pip install is necessary. Uh, I'll call this to print date, and this is going to be date time dot date time. And then I'm going to pass in everything in converted date one at a time. So if you're unfamiliar with this notation, this works when you have like a list or a tuple and it says pass everything that's in this tuple one at a time. So this is the same thing as saying converted date zero, converted date one, and so on. So instead of typing all this out for converted date zero through five, I'm just going to control Z this a bunch and we'll use the asterisk notation. So this will make our date time object just as we need and store it in to print date. But the reason I did this in the first place is because of the function strf time. So this function is built into date times and it allows us to format it very, very easily. So all we need to do is say percent %m slash percent %d slash percent %y. So what this does is it says print the month, print a slash, print the day, a slash, and then print the year. So finally, I will say print to print date. Again, I'm going to say don't make a new line after this print statement, just end. And if I run this, I can see my dates are actually how they should be. I don't have these weird tuples. I don't have these weird floats. I actually have the string representing the year. As you can see, it messed up the formatting of the rest of the table, but I'm going to call it good for this video. So as always, a big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.